Yesterday we created an app, it was called Astronomy Photos. We had a part one of the lecture, basically where we loaded our photos, right? But we quickly saw that in loading the photos, there was some flickering happen where the images were getting swapped out maybe three, four times before an actual image stayed stationary. So today we'll see, we'll take a look at how to solve that problem of where the images are flickering. Okay, so that's our intention to have a lecture to see how to stop that flickering from happening. And in a, in a later lecture, we'll talk about how to save those images in the caches directory so that we are not always hitting our network helper for that image. Because if we've seen the image before, hitting the API again is expensive, right? Anytime you go out to the web to get data, that's a call you're making, that's the user cellular network you're using, that's the data they're using, right? So the best way or Every way you could save making a query to a web API or data is good, okay? So we won't get into part three today, but we will get into part three later. Today we'll only get into the second part, oh sorry, we'll only get into the second part of it. No. We'll only get into the first part of it, image flickering. First part, second part we'll come to later, third part we did yesterday, okay? What does the app look like? This is our application here. Let me run it again. Do we all have astronomy photos from yesterday? Cool. So our astronomy photos, it runs. We have the activity spinner going. It's trying to find images. It will only stop when it's found an image or it's downloaded an image um, correctly. At this point, we don't see any flickering because we're on the first page or the first two cells. We were not moving our table view in any way. But if I was to scroll my table view up, down, right, I'll start seeing some flickering happening, right, where the images are changing places, right? So that's the problem we're trying to address, trying to fix that problem. And we'll fix that problem by going to the cell. Only in the cell we'll do the work. We'll go to the cell. We'll create some sort of private variable called URL string. URL string will keep track URL string will keep track of the image URL it saw, right? If I saw image URL httpa.com, I want to save that specific URL to the cell, right? It works great because the cell is a class, it's a reference, it will keep reference to that particular URL string. And the only time we want to change that image is if the URL that the cell stored is the same URL as the image. Any questions about that? Any questions about what I just said here? Yes, sir. So to reiterate, when we want to have our table cell uh, have a UI entry and we're getting it from the internet, we should store the URL inside the cell first before we load the image. Yes. Okay. We're going to keep track of it. Okay. Because if we don't keep track of it, then it just gets any cell because of the decure usable cell. Right. And as I said earlier, this is solved with using third-party libraries because there's mechanisms that the third-party libraries have. Typical example like Kingfisher is a popular image framework that iOS developers just know. That's like one of the frameworks you use. It's awesome. It has caching both in memory, saving. When I say caching, I'm talking about saving temporarily, right? Um, so Kingfisher is great. But now, as native developers, we will do it ourselves here, right? We won't do the caching today, but we'll do the part of the flickering, right? Stop the flickering from happening. So let's go to our, let's go to our planet cell. Let's navigate over to our planet cell. Right now, our planet cell, there's planet image view. Planet image view has, I renamed um, get image. I, re I renamed set image to get image. So if you want, you could go ahead and refactor your, um, you could refactor your UI image view extension. It's now called get image, right? It was set image before. Everybody, if you have your image extension from yesterday, you could refactor it to get image, right? Before we had like set image, set image wasn't really setting the image. This is more like getting me the image, and then the image view is the one setting the image. For some clarification there, okay? Great, so let's go back to our planet cell. Planet cell, basically you have your planet image view. On our image view, all image views right now, we have an extension. The extension basically does the heavy lifting for us. If we go back to it, you don't have to go back to it here. But if you go back to the extension, 
our extension simply takes a URL. It takes a URL string, right? Every API you hit, if you want to get an image, there's some sort of URL associated with that image, right? That's the way you get data to create your image. Everybody with me? You want to get an image, there must be a URL that exists somewhere, right? Somewhere. Either in your JSON or your JSON has some sort of link where you could make that URL. But at the end of the day, what do we need for an image from the web is a URL. And here we have a URL string, and we have a completion handler because we know it's an asynchronous call, right? And I've seen yesterday, um, right, some people had a return image view. If I say return image view, it will always be nil. If here I say return image view on my function, don't type in anything here, but if I say return image view, we know what happens here. What happens here? Who wants to explain to me what happens here? If I say return image view, yes, Chelsea? Very good. The function returns before the completion returns, or before the completion is done. So that's why you cannot explicitly use arrow UI image, because it will always return that UI image before the completion handler is, is done. Okay. We're not returning anything. We're capturing a value. The completion handler here, it doesn't return anything. It captures the value. Uh, those guys? Yeah. Oh, that closure actually doesn't return anything. Remember, a closure is a function. It could return a value. If it's not returning a value, you either say void or you put empty parents. Okay? Very good. Um, and then our image view extension has an activity indicator, the activity indicator we saw earlier, the orange uh, progress spinner. And in our image extension, we have our network helper getting. Um, activated here. So we call the network helper, perform data task, we pass it the URL, right? What happens here? What is this? What are we doing here? Tiffany? Exactly. So what Tiffany is saying here right now is we're using a capture list the open square bracket, close square bracket here is referred to as a capture list. So we're using a capture list to break any strong reference cycles we're about to create here. Because right now, activity indicator is a class, right? And the class itself is about to be captured by our closure, right? So we do not want the two of them to have strong references to each other. Because we know anytime we have two objects with strong references to each other, it creates a memory leak. So to break that memory leak from happening, we use weak or we could use unowned, everybody? Either weak or unowned on that capture list, right? If I use unknown there, my app has a probability of crashing, by the way, if I use unowned, because basically I'm saying the closure and this active indicator will always be around at the same time. This is not true, right? Because my... Um, activity indicator could be not available and my closure returns and my app will crash. So here we don't want to use, don't use unowned, use weak. So use weak. Weak is optional. This is why we have an optional here, right? This is why activity indicator is optional. Weak is the safe way to break a retain cycle. Very similar to when we say guard, let, as opposed to bang in and optional. We don't force and wrap. Force and wrap is the same as unknown. Okay? And what does our network helper do for us? It returns us data. Either it has a failure. Our network helper class right now has a result type. Either that result type, it's a enum. Either it has a failure, which is an app error. Or what's success in our network helper? Data, right? According to Christian here, success is data. And we all agreed that data could create an image. Data could create a joke model. Data could create a podcast model, right? Data is what we need. That's it. When we download anything from the internet, it is data, right? It's up to that software to convert that data into whatever extension or file that you want. But at the end of the day, it's bytes. Bytes is data. You download something, you download in bytes. What's data? Data is bytes. Cool? So if we get our data, then we create an image. 
If we get our data back successfully, we create an image. And what does our completion handler capture here? It captures the image. So now on my cell, whenever that image is ready, I get back to my image in my completion handler in the cell. Right? I get back my image and I place my image on my planet image view. And that's it. Any questions? So yes, we used image client before, but it would be better um, to use this extension here because that extension is directly tied into your image view. On any image view, if I have that extension, I can say my image view dot get image. That's it, right? So this particular extension is tied into an image view. A button has an image view. Anywhere you place in an image, an image is only placed into an image view. You cannot place an image anywhere but an image view. The image view is the container for that image property, okay? So that extension works anywhere you want. You could take that extension and bring it in any project you want. As far as like getting an image from the internet, that function will get you that image. Any questions about that? So don't do anything else to that get image here. Like for example, you might get tempted to say, oh, I'm working with country code. Let me put country code in here. Country code is a string, great. If you do that, this particular extension is no longer portable. You've coupled, you've coupled, you've joined, you've connected that particular get image to your country app right now. Everybody with me? I want to keep this as generic, as general as possible, as general purpose as possible, right? So I don't want to tie in any other functionality to this. If you want to do any country code logic, you do it where? Where should you do your country code logic? This is the MVC question. If you want to do your country code logic, meaning I get a country code, I put it into a URL. Yes, sir. Would you do it here or would you do it? What would you do it? In the view controller, what would you do it? You would string interpolate in the view controller. What part of the view controller? What part of the view controller? I guess he's talking about the cell for all. Our lab for countries, right? We have a URL that takes in some country code. It returns us an image, right? Where would you do that code to make that URL? Like, would you do it here? Would you just pass in a country code and make your URL on line 17? Where would you do it? Anybody? Where would you do that code? Cameron, where would you do that, do that code? Cameron says in the country model. Do we agree? Kelby, do we agree? Why would you put it in the country model? <laughs> <laughs> I see where the interview going. Um, all right. Well, why, why would you put it in the country model, Chelsea? Right? You put it in the country model because only the country cares how it makes its URL. The view controller doesn't care, right? Where you care about making that URL, that valid URL for the country flag, is in the country model. That's where you do it. Don't do it in the extension. Don't do it in the view controller. Put it in, that set, in the country model, whatever the country model is called. That's where you want to do that logic. It, in your country model or your country API, wherever you have that URL, wherever you have your country happening, you have a configure cell maybe, right? Maybe it's in the cell. Okay. Wherever you're doing, yeah, wherever you have that country there, that's what you want to do. You could also do it in the country model where you're returning a URL. You could use a computed property where you give it a code, it gives you back a URL. Yes, that's valid. It could be something like this, where I say struct country, and I say var uh, flag, flag URL, for example. Flag URL returns a string. Guys, I'm a hand of whispers. Uh, flag URL returns a string. At this point, I could say country that flag URL and return it that string I want, right? The country knows about its code, correct? Yes, does the country know about its code? So here I could say return, here I could say return, if I have a country code here, uh, what's it called, alpha2 code or something? 
uh, something like that, some string. So here I can say return HTTPS uh, colon, whatever it is, um, da, 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 dot image dot whatever, interpolate some alpha code. Right, everybody? So the minute on my country, I could simply say country dot flag URL, it gives me a URL. Right? So either I could do it on the cell or I could do it on the country itself. Right? In that case, I'll probably rather do it. I'll probably rather do it on the country model, as Cameron says here. On my country, I just say country dot flag URL. We could use computed properties. Those are what they use for. Right? The country knows about its code. You want to create something from that code? Simply create a, a computed property. Right? I think that's the one friction we had with all the labs so far. Because we have this JSON, we can't use the SVG unless we have a framework to do that. But we have a code. And from a code, we can construct a URL to get an image. That's the part, right? That's the part where we're like, oh, what's happening? We could do it. On the country, we have some flag URL. Every country has a code. So I could simply say, computer property, get me the flag URL, get me my image URL. I'm done. Any questions about that? Right? This is a skill that you need to know, you need to master by the time assessment comes next week. Right? It's one of those things. So you, could, you could have multiple things in JSON that you need to do. JSON is just like, oh, not. It's plain and simple if all, everything you want is in the JSON file. Right? But you might have a point where there's something in the JSON file that you need to do more work with. That more work with part, we need to get comfortable with that. Right? So I might have a JSON with a partial image. Right? Which Foursquare does, right? You have to do a different call to get like the other part of the image URL. So you have to join those two um, images together, those two strings together to get a valid image URL. Right? So not every time your JSON will have everything you need for your object. But knowing how to create, we know how to use string interpolation, right? So you're just making one other call to get the flag URL. That's it. Cool? Great. Um, did you guys have this? Do you want this? To take a look at you good good okay so let's keep going here uh, so this is what our extension is extension basically takes a URL gets us back an image and back in our planet cell in our trade enclosure we have a result because we have that result type here we switch on it if we have a failure in that case we just put in a person fail right we have an error is there a, I need to see if there's an error um, S, SF uh, symbol. If anybody sees it, let me know. That would be nice. Just put like an error symbol as opposed to like a person fail symbol. Right, everybody? So instead of saying person fail, I could put like an error image. But basically, if we have an error, we capture that. If not, we got an image back. Great. And here we use unboxing for the associated value. In the failure, we did not use it. We did not want it here. But if we do want it, we could use var image or we could use let image. If we don't want it at all, we simply ignore it like we ignored it with the failure. Associated values you use if you want to use, but you have access to it if you want to. And if you want access to it, you use parents. Let, most, most likely you use let because you don't want to change whatever you're trying to access. And then some sort of variable name or constant name. The name could be anything you want. And here we say simply uh, self in that case, we have dispatch main queue because we're coming from a background thread. Coming from a background thread. So we're coming from a background thread, so we need to dispatch back to the main to update UI. So dispatch back to the main thread to update the UI. So this is why we do dispatch main and sync here. And here we have missing argument. What are you missing? I haven't done anything to you. Uh, missing argument for parameter. Oh, oh did I? <laughs> what did I remove here? Uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. Activity, activity. Oh, that's one thing I missed. No. Yes. Crazy. Uh, come on. Uh, 
I have like nothing here. Missing. What's this complaint about? String, string. Oh, this guy. What point, what point did I move that? No, yeah, what's happening? Uh, which string? The colon get image with URL string. This is expecting a string here. Uh, URL string here. Where am I? Oh, this guy here. You gotta move that. Okay. Did nothing. <laughs> Anybody saw any difference between this and two seconds ago? Okay. Yeah, that's why I say commit usually, commit frequently. Um, okay, so let's run the code again and continue. Yeah, Christian, it's not required to have parents in the result there. That's more like, I. yeah. All right, let's verify we're getting data and then we'll move on. Any questions about what we spoke about so far? Network helper, um, at this point, throughout the rest of the unit, we'll be, well, Throughout the rest of the program, we'll be using network helper, we'll be using some sort of app error, and some sort of like image helper, or in our case, an extension. Okay, those are the three things we need. Uh, was there a question? Eric? Okay, so let's go ahead to the cell here. In our cell, we said we'll create, here we want to keep track. Well, objective is to. Uh, stop flickering oh, while, yeah. Uh, okay, so objective is to stop flickering while the queue reusable cells. Uh, keep track, well, solution. Keep track using a string. Keep track of the image URL string by using a string variable on the cell. Okay, so let's go ahead and set that up. So here we have some sort of private var. It's a URL string. We set it to empty string. So we have an empty, we have a URL string here. It's a, it, starts off, it starts off as being empty. When I call my configure cell, when I call my configure cell, I wanna set the URL the cell's URL string, All right? We'll differentiate that by saying self.url string equal to URL string, All right? This is one of the places where you could use self here to differentiate between two variables of the same name. So we have a variable coming in from the configure cell and we have our own private cell. We differentiate between the two of them using self, self.url string. So here cell, uh, set the cell's URL string, great. Wherever we change in that image view, wherever we change in that image view, in our case, in the success block here, I want to say if self.url string 
equal to the URL string coming in from the coming in from the object. If they're the same, if the cell URL string is the same as the URL string that got passed in to the from the cell format, right? If they're the same, then go ahead and set the image. If they're the same, go ahead and set the image. Only if the cell's URL string is the same as the one being passed in from the cell for go at will we change the current image here. Right? Because remember, with the queue and with the queue is trying to get a cell, right? Cell forward is getting called. We have an image URL getting passed in. We only want to change that particular image view if the cell's image URL string is the same as the one getting passed in to my configure function. <coughs> okay? And we want to go one step further and introduce a new override function. We'll go one step further, we'll introduce an override function. The override function is called prepare for reuse. Prepare for reuse is a great name. It says what it is. As the cell gets dequeued, you could set up your cell before it comes on screen. Right? So we have a function. It's called prepare for reuse. If I have anything I want to set up before my cell for row gets called, I do it in prepare for reuse. It's almost like view will appear right? on a cell. So here I will go outside of my function, make sure I'm outside of my function. I'll type in prepare for reuse. Right? Prepare for reuse is an override function on UI table view cell. Let's see if we get some docs here. Okay, can we see in the back? Can we all see in the back? Okay, so here, prepare for reuse is the function that we're using, the override function. And what are we gonna do there? We're gonna set the image to nil. So the image doesn't have any previous image. We empty now that image before, right? So here we have prepare for reuse. This method is called invoked, right? Invoked is the same as call when we said earlier in unit one. So here, this method gets called just before the object is returned from the table view method, dq, dq, reusable cell. So just before that, prepare for reuse gets called. So if you want to do any setup before your cell, that's where you do it. Everybody? Questions? And the particular setup we want to do is not much. Definitely, we want to call super prepare for reuse. And what we want to do is empty out the image view or set it to nil and then what we do here we have our planet image view that image equal to nil okay so we've done two things one we've kept track of the url for that particular cell for the cell we kept track of what url you have what url do you have next when the url comes in from my configure cell, are they the same? If they're the same, if they're the same, and only if they're the same, will I actually swap out that image? Okay, yes? Uh, white man white, and this has color. That might be a syntax, not syntax, a syntax highlighting error there on one of our parts there. But just make sure you say in self, the self is the cell, right? The self is the cell. The URL string is the one coming in from the function. Everybody? Yulia, questions? All right. So here we say in self dot URL string is the cell's property. And URL string is the 
argument from our configure cell method. Again, you could rename it if, it if it's really giving you a hard time to understand the differences. You could just rename it, everybody. But come in the habit of using the same variable names for things like that. That's called shadowing. Shadowing is when the same name is the same variables, but you differentiate them with like a self. Or if we do like if let data equal to data, that's shadowing, same name, right? But we understand what's happening. We know we're unwrapping it and we put it into this data variable, okay? Great, so let's go ahead and run our app and see what's going on. So I run my app. Let's see if it loads as usual. Loads as usual, great. Let's try to scroll here. So I'm gonna scroll, right? There's no flicker in here. I'll scroll up really quickly. <coughs> right, there's no flicker in here. It only changes when it's the actual image. Were we able to run it on our part there? Right, and confirm that. Cassandra, were you able to run it and confirm? Come on, internet. That's where I'm going with the caching part of it. Like, if it was cached, I wouldn't have to hit the network again. I would just get the image. Everybody understands this part, right? and we'll solve it in a different lecture. Same project, but we'll solve it in a different lecture. I don't want to overload us with new concepts, minus talking about post later in the week. Everybody with me? So the part where I'm going and loading the image again, we'll solve it in part three of this lecture. Right? So we were able to go through solutions. We were able to go through solution one using a string to keep track of the cell's image URL and set the image to nail in prepare for reuse, right? So we saw a new method on our cell called prepare for reuse. If you want to do any cleanup before a cell show, gets shown, that's where you do it, right? If I want to clean up my cell before it's presented to the user, that's where I do it, in prepare for reuse. Clean up in the way of take out any image that's on the cell. Set it to nail. We remove the image. Because I don't want to show an old image if, that's, if that image is not the proper image. Okay, so I set it to nail. And the next thing we saw was the earlier one yesterday was please, if you image, if anytime you download in something as an image, put an activity indicator to the user. Let them know something is getting downloaded. Yes, sir. No, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. So as a matter of fact, you probably want to do that as better reading. Um, so what Brendan is saying, to read better, put their prepare before the configure. That's a good point there. It reads better. It doesn't change anything, but it's a better coding style. Everybody with me? So any like override functions you have, definitely put them before your own functions. So I'll put it right here. Thank you. That's good. Cool. So we'll end lecture here. Any questions about what we've done so far? So the only things we did was we created this URL string. That URL string keeps track of the cells, the actual cell URL string. Is that the same image that I set earlier? Is that the same URL? If it is, go ahead and set it. If not, move on. And before that, well, over here, we said, before every cell gets loaded, set it to nil, meaning remove the image. Okay? Great. So we'll stop here. Thank you.